that fosters your emotional and professional relationships so that you become a more productive and fulfilled version of yourself. Fejiro is a chartered accountant with over 12 years experience in the finance industry, a certified relationship and emotional intelligence coach, and the founder of Carfell Solutions, through which she and her team are dedicated to empowering businesses and career professionals to build and sustain robust relationships. She is also a family life practitioner and the founder of the Ask Mrs. Sparkles Academy, where she's wholeheartedly building a tribe of enlightened and equipped singles, sparkling couples, and harmonized families through which these nations will be transformed. She is an associate of the Network of Family Systems Engineering and a member of the Institute of Family Life Association of America. She's happily married, and together, they are blessed with two amazing boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sparkles. Fejiro Adaka, who is fondly called Mrs. Sparkles, is a radiant lighthouse. Every encounter with her leaves you with profound wisdom and practical insights that fosters your emotional and professional relationships so that you become a more productive and fulfilled version of yourself. Fejiro is a chartered accountant with over 12 years experience in the finance industry, a certified relationship and emotional intelligence coach, and the founder of Carfell Solutions, through which she and her team are dedicated to empowering businesses and career professionals to build and sustain robust relationships. She is also a family life practitioner and the founder of the Ask Mrs. Sparkles Academy, where she's wholeheartedly building a tribe of enlightened and equipped singles, sparkling couples, and harmonized families through which she believes nations will be transformed. She is an associate of the Network of Family Systems Engineering and a member of the Institute of Family Life Association of America. She's happily married, and together, they are blessed with two amazing boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sparkles. Fejiro Adaka, who is fondly called Mrs. Sparkles, is a radiant lighthouse. Every encounter with her leaves you profound wisdom and practical insights that for your emotional and professional relationships to become a more productive and fulfilled version of yourself. Fejiro is an accountant with over 12 years experience in the finance industry a certified relationship and emotional intelligence coach and the founder of Carfell Solutions, through which she and her team are dedicated to empowering businesses and career professionals to build and sustain robust relationships. She's also a family practitioner and the founder of Ask Mrs. Sparkles Academy, where she's wholeheartedly building a tribe of enlightened and equipped singles sparkling couples, and harmonized families through which she believes nations will be transformed. She is an associate of the Network of Family Systems Engineering and a member of the Institute of Family Life Association of America. She's happily married, and together, they are blessed with two amazing boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sparkles. Hello everyone, good evening and welcome, 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 welcome. Who is excited? I'm happy we are finally doing this, okay? Drop a comment for me, let me know that you can hear me live, clear and direct. Can you hear me please? Drop a comment for me, let me know. Let me know you can hear me. I'm super excited that this day is finally here. And I would like your confirmation just to be sure that you can hear me. Let me see. Awesome, 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 awesome. I see the comments. So it's day of the series, Dating Chronicles with Mrs. Sparkles. And thank you, ladies and for joining me tonight. Okay, so welcome everyone. As you already know, this is Mrs. Sparkles, and it's a good evening from Lagos, Nigeria. 
Now it's such a delight to have you here with me. Such a delight, such a delight. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Now let me know what part of the world are you joining us from tonight? Our speaker is here, so there's no time to waste. What part of the world are you joining me from? And I apologize for the delay, okay? We had some glitch, you know, technical issues behind. I apologize for the delay, but please let me know what part of the world are you joining me from? Now, I'll be looking in the chats to, to see that response. Now, while I wait for that, I want to share something quickly with you, okay? I want to share something quickly with you. Now, someone asked me, Mrs. Pappos, why are you doing this? I mean, it's five day series. Why are you gathering single professionals, business owners from all over to join you for five days at the beginning of the year 2024? Now, I'll answer that question here for you because I know some of you have the same question going through or running through your mind. Now, I reflect a lot, okay? I'm that person that looks back and assess how, you know, I have lived my life, what has happened, what needs to change, what I need to work on, and all of that. Now, I had two major observations, amongst others, from my season of reflecting in the month of December. I, I had some... Um, observations that I want to share with you. Now, last year, I had the privilege of working with professional business owners, clients from six different countries. Okay, now guess what? 90% of that number were married couples. Yes. Now, they came to me and they got results that it came for quite all right, but I had an observation. Okay, their experiences in marriage I realized that your experiences in marriage could have been better if they had prepared better. Yes, their experiences in marriage could have been better if they prepared better. I mean, if they knew better, they would have made maybe a different choice. Now, some of them were bold enough to admit this, but some others would not. Now, we're not trying to change or anything, but Looking at that, I began to ask myself certain questions. Now, before I go there, the second observation was this. You may have heard about premarital counseling, which is what many of us know in this part of the world, whereby you're proposed to or you propose to your lady and then you now engage maybe your church or a private professional to run premarital counseling with you. What that does for you is that at that season of life, it is almost difficult. Many people do not take a step back, even if they find a red flag. Because at that point, you hear people saying things like, oh, I have shared my card. Bella Ninja has carried my story. You know, um, I've already started planning the wedding. I mean, I already announced my proposal on my social media pages and all of that. Many people identify some things that they need to work on, but a very, very few percentage of that population take time to work on those. What they tell themselves is no problem, we'll work it out, we'll work it out. Whereas there are some foundational issues that they may have needed to look into and take a step back. It made me realize that premarital counseling at that stage is late. And it reveals, I'm sure you can already see the gap that exists when it comes to dating and preparing for marriage. Many of us need to start preparing for marriage before we start dating. Thank you, Helen. We need to start preparing for marriage before we start dating. And this was the genesis of Dating Chronicles. Now, before now, I was thinking and realized that I got this idea, idea like two, three years ago, but I just pushed it aside, you know, but I feel like in this season, this is the right to let her yeah and that's why i have my colleagues my friends you know joining me here to do this okay we value your relationships and we don't want you to go far all the way 
There's so many marriages that are struggling now, that are breaking down. If they knew better, some of the things that we know now, if we knew better, we would have done better. So here you have a privilege, right? And today we have an amazing, amazing, amazing woman with us here tonight i don't want to waste our time because i know that there is so much that we need to touch her i would read her bio right and bring her on board who's excited who's excited who's excited i can't wait so i'll introduce her right away okay we have Mojukba Ehiri, the founder and lead counselor at the right fit marriage academy she helps you to become the person your spouse is excited to come home to. She is a certified same biz facilitator. Now, same biz means save your marriage before it starts. Now, she is a certified same biz facilitator and a certified family systems engineering practitioner. She <clears throat> teaches on marriage topics in a 19,000 member Facebook community, guys. 19,000 member Facebook community and on the popular weekly relationship and marriage show. Mama's Corner, Wazobia 95.1 FM radio. She's the author of Marriage is Not a Trap, 30 Reasons Why Couples Quarrel About Money and Couples Connect, a workbook for assessing and enhancing your marriage, this particular one. I have used it. And yes, I think I've also read her book on marriage is not a trap. Great book. Okay. Now she's happily married in an inter-ethnic marriage for 38 years and counting, like 10, 20, 38, 38 years and counting. Ladies and gentlemen, I already see you guys dancing and being excited over there. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, please. Join me to welcome to day one of the series, Mommy Mo. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Sparkles, and everyone. Can you hear me live and direct? I can hear you. Thank God. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma. I'm happy to be here too. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, my joy is boundless right now. I'm so excited. How are you feeling this evening? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for doing this. We need to do more and more of this for people. Yeah. I was listening to you as you were sharing your why for doing it. And believe you me, we do need to start, you know, people need to do this kind of stuff, learn this kind of things way before they ever even meet the first person they want to be their boyfriend or girlfriend, not yeah. to talk of the person that they want to marry. Sorry. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So glad to have you here. And thank you so much, guys. Drop a comment, celebrate, show your excitement. I see all of it. Welcome. Ma, was so happy to have you. And thank you again for honoring our invitation for the second time in the Ask Mrs. Parker's Academy. God bless you, Ma. So we're going to jump right into it. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome. Tonight's session would be very interesting but also insightful okay now i'm going to be asking our guests a series of questions we're going to take her back you know to many decades ago because 38 years ah my have to cut so for us today right i'm going to be asking <laughs> i'm going to be asking her a series of questions and there will be real life lessons for you to learn and unfiltered truth about dating about marriage for you to bring from now by the end of the conversation if there is time we will take one or two questions, okay? Now, I'll jump right into it, Ma. I don't want to waste time. What was growing up like for you? I mean, from your teenagehood to adulthood, and um, would you say your that experience influenced your dating relationship or your perspective about marriage? Okay, then. Uh, first, I always said that unlike most people my age, I I was very privileged in the sense that from when I was in from when I went to boarding house is the 
time when my house was open to boys, mm. my father had a rule. You could not have, you, you couldn't stand by the gate and talk to your friends. Yeah. You would rather have them come into the house. Mm. And it was when I became an adult that I understood why he was doing that. So in my house, we had a sitting room for the young people and a sitting room for the adults. And the reason is so that if, you know, people would not be afraid to come to our own home. Mm -hmm. And so by the time that I went to the university, I did engineering and I also had male friends. Having boys come into the house was nothing strange, mm -hmm. you know, for, for me. Mm -hmm. I would say that my parents prepared me for relationship. In fact, I don't think that conversation ever came up in my home about having a boyfriend or anything. It was mm -hmm. when I got to the university that I got introduced to the idea. Indeed, when I was in higher school, I had a crush on one of my teachers and I could very easily have gone um, mm -hmm. astray. Yeah. But even though I didn't have clear relationship training from home, the fact that my parents had an open house, they allowed us to bring friends, mm -hmm. meant also that when one started to have relationships, you actually brought people home to the house. Mm -hmm. I think that was a very in that I, I was already um this thing. The second thing that influenced me growing up is that you know I read a lot of we call them Dennis Robin books yes. at that time. Yeah, so they had all of these romantic stories, and you were always thinking that somebody is going to come and sweep you up your feet, <laughs> you know, and all of those things. So one was very, very um naive, mm. and then the thing also really was that the world was much smaller mm. at the time mm. so there were not there were not too many um outside influences mm. on one's uh, life so what you learned at home what you learned at school and maybe what you learned at church yeah. was all that shaped your life and shaped the life of almost everybody that you were going to meet mm. Mm. That's interesting, really, really interesting. Um, now that you got that background, I hear you when you said you could have slipped, but I mean, your parents created, well, I say a safe environment, so you could have, you know, easy going conversations in the house. I, I noticed that when I was growing up, lots of my uncles had two sitting rooms, but the way you explained it now for the reason for that sitting room was not what I saw in TV <laughs> when I was growing up. I would just see, the main part where you know adults go to and the part where children play and, and I never thought anything about it but I like the way you you explain it now so Ma, after sharing that we'd like to know how did you meet your husband <laughs> you know I think first of all let me also because sometimes when people hear how I meet my husband mm. they just assume that oh mommy Mo is very lucky she just met her <laughs> husband and everything so when I, I, I already told you I had a crush on my teacher yeah. when I was in law school form. Then I went to the university mm. and I was rushed in October rush. Wow. You know, naively, I got to the school and, you know, young men liked me. And mm. you know, so I, I, I had a, some sort of relationship with somebody in that first year. Mm -hmm. But frankly, I can't say that I knew what it was um, it was about, you mm -hmm. know, so it was just movies, spend time in his room and all of those kind mm. of things. And yeah. I think when he wanted to start pressuring me to have sex with him, mm. I, I backed off. Mm. And then I got into another relationship mm. and then I got into a third relationship mm -hmm. and I got into a fourth relationship, I even think. Mm. And then finally I got into a relationship with one of my classmates, which I thought was going to go somewhere. Wow. And we, you know, we both were probably young, and so we didn't quite know what it was that we will do. And then, because I want you know to be honest on this program, because if I paint a rosy picture, young people won't learn from yeah. me. During NYSC, I also fancied a married man, mm. Mm. you know. And I think the only thing that kept me from not going on in that relationship was what am I going to tell my parents I'm doing with a married mm. man, you know? But I was on the verge of leaving his wife. I found out later on that he actually left wow. his wife before I now met my husband. Mm. So 
I want people to have that background. Why? So that they can know that the road to meeting the person that you want to meet yeah. is full of a lot of yeah. yeah. And that yeah. is why we are now saying that some of these things that we're getting people to do is pretty important. Yeah. So now coming to my friend, my husband, who I eventually married, we actually met during NYSC. So we served yeah. in the same place. And we just really were friends. So there were about 15 of us who were doing NYSC in the same organization. So we used to move together, go to lunch together, mm. go to the bar after work together, you know. Well, are you eating together too? <laughs> in lunch? So, <laughs> we, we, were, we really were, jo we used to go in groups. So it's mm. not that I, it just was a friend in a group of many other friends. Yeah. Mm. You know, that was the way that it was, you mm. know, so, and then there was, conversation was going this way because he had schooled abroad one day he was we were talking and he was saying oh Nigerian girls they can pose they'll be interested in you and you know they'll be pretending that they're not interested mm -hmm. and then I just looked at uh, him and said where which continent are, are you from? coming from <laughs> kind of girls have you been meeting yes anybody who's interested in you why wouldn't they let you know that they're interested why will they be posing mm. that's uh, I, I don't know the girls you've been meeting, but you know, okay, ask me out and let's see what will happen. Yeah. So that's what happened. And then he invited me out and I went with him and we had a lovely time seeing a movie mm. at the National Theater. And then he then invited me to come visit him at home. I think he was thinking that I would not come because he was a man. But remember the kind of background yeah. I, said I had. And I also was an engineering student. I had graduated engineering school so mm -hmm. i was one of two girls in a class of about How 30 boys so i mean i was used to being with men mm. i didn't think anything about it plus i was also confident enough that if i went and visited him and he wanted to do what i didn't want to i'll just walk out on him yeah. but i just wanted to prove a point that you know i don't know the kind of girls that you have been meeting but i'm different <laughs> if, if people who know their minds people who are strong-minded mm. if they like you they will tell you they like you. If you don't like, if they don't like you, they, you know, they'll move on with their own life. So that mm. day, rain beat me oh, wow. before I could locate the house. But I didn't want to turn back because I didn't want to get to the office the following day. And then he would laugh well, at me and you. say, you know. Yeah. So eventually I located his place. He was staying with his brother. Mm. And he was so, I was wet all over. Oh, he was so glad to see me. So we spent some time together. He you know had a beautiful um set of long play records you know we chatted we talked extensively at that point in time it, it wasn't really about a relationship yeah. he didn't say that he liked me i didn't think that i liked him he just was good company and that was where we started from and i remember that i even think at that time he was dating another girl mm. so innocent yes pure genuine relationship he was just there wasn't any uh, any singles but i remember that about three months after we started this friendship i did say to my parents that i had met the person i wanted to marry wow which was very funny <laughs> because my mom then said so who is he i say ah i, I don't think that we haven't even reached that stage i don't even know whether the guy likes me <laughs> you know? wow. but again that shows you that it was something i could talk with my um, parents about parents yes about. Yes. yes. Eventually, he, he he decided that it was me that he liked, and so he broke off with the other lady. Of course, they'd also been talking, and there were issues. He was Igbo, and the other lady, too, was a Yoruba person, and she didn't think that her parents would ever agree mm. to anything happening between them. Mm. So they broke up, and they remained friends, and I knew how to, you know, and then, you know, we, we started dating. Mm -hmm. What was interesting is that after we started dating, mm -hmm. some other young men in our group of NYSC yes. people started kissing my husband that, ah, ah, you played a fast one oh, of us, that all of us were interested in him. <laughs> yeah, <what's laughs> you know? And then, you know, I, I said to them, I said, well, if you were interested, why didn't you, you say are, anything? Mm. Yes, but that's how myself and my husband, you know, started to um, uh, have a relationship. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I always tell people that the primary thing that attracted my husband, that made me yeah. find my husband 
attractive was that he just was a clear-minded person. You know, he knew what he wanted mm. in life and he always told me. Mm. So a, a major thing that most people are always surprised about when I share it is that I tell them that when I met my husband in 1980, so in 1982, I had a scholarship to go abroad to do a PhD. Mm -hmm. And of course, he knew about it and we talked about it. And he said, well, mm -hmm. that I like that you want to go abroad and do a PhD and I wouldn't want to stand in your way at all. Mm -hmm. However, if you go abroad to do a PhD, I'm not sure that I'll wait for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably will move on and marry somebody um, else. Mm -hmm. And most people always think that, ah, why was it? I said, no, I like that he was open yes. with me yes. about what he wanted and what he didn't want. Mm -hmm. What he didn't want. And what he was saying to me is, what do I want? Mm -hmm. I should make my decision independent of him as well. Mm -hmm. I went abroad and did the master's program. And at the end of the master's program, I came back. I came back because it was something that I thought through very much about. Again, when people are listening to me now, they, they need to not hear me in the context of today's world. Yeah. They need to hear me in the context of the time that yeah. I was living in, mm. in order to get the principle, which is chiefly you and somebody must be in alignment. Yeah. If you are not in alignment, it's the, the going abroad and you staying behind. It's not somebody wanting to cut short your dream. Mm. It might just be that you folks are going differently. Yeah. The way I solved the issue for myself is I looked at it. I looked at what I wanted to do for PhD. I knew that if I did a PhD, I was going to remain abroad because what I wanted to do a PhD in, I won't find work in Nigeria. Mm. And I knew that I wanted to live with this man. So oh, how, he, how, how, how? He was a no he was a no-brainer. And I knew that I could I could make a life. Mm. I, I could do whatever else. I could have a career. He, there was never any time when he didn't want me. So in the years that we were dating, we were talking about all of these things. Mm. And I got to know his family. He got to know my family. Of course, we had hurdles on the way. Yeah. But we talked extensively about a lot of things. And we talked about it without fear that um, um, if I discuss this thing with him now, he may be thinking that. Mm -hmm. Or if he discusses this thing with me, I may be thinking. Mm -hmm. We just felt that we owed it to ourselves to be honest about what we wanted in life. Yeah. We were ready to go our different ways. Mm -hmm. So we went, we didn't want to invest our emotions mm -hmm. before clarifying whether we should even yeah. go on um, together. Yeah. I mean, uh, to just show you how people sort of things at that time, we also had a friend who was an AS person mm -hmm. and he had dated a girl who was an AS mm -hmm. for quite some time. but. After they had dated themselves for a couple of years, they came to the conclusion, and very tearfully, they broke up their relationship. Whoa. It wasn't other people that put pressure on them. Yeah. It was them who said they talked about it and discussed it over a length of time. Mm. But they just realized that, look, we love one another, but perhaps the best thing we can do for one another is to separate. So if I look back at my dating period, because once I started to see my husband, um, there was nobody else for me. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting also really is that in all of those years, there were times also when I'll be thinking to myself that, hmm, how do I know I won't meet another person that I will like more than this? Mm -hmm. After all, mm -hmm. I met some other people who I thought were um, the one. <laughs> who I were fantastic people. Mm -hmm. And then I met somebody else and thought they were better. So I kept thinking, hmm, am I sure that I won't meet another man who I will like more than I this? I know, I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that feeling. Wow. I like how you shared this. And I like the emphasis on in those days. Because while you talked about the fact that you said, eh, well, you ask me now and see if I'm different. What I saw from that was you had an understanding of who you were. Like there was confidence and, and, and boldness. Like you were not scared of anything. And then he, on the other hand, had an open mind. Right? So you guys may not thinking. I feel like in this generation, there's too many ifs, like you say something and it has several interpretations and several meanings. And that, you know, simple 
relationship is avoided and people just jump into oh this is how i'm feeling my emotions and the like so i like that you, really <laughs> you know mrs sparkles let me say something about what you just said okay um i think the young people of today have invested too much mm. in learning about negative relationship stories mm. Mm. and they have not invested sufficient time and effort into um positive relationship mm -hmm. stories which is why i was glad to hear this with you what do i mean you know when you go online and you read the news media and you watch the movies Ooh. you can be forgiven for thinking that interacting with another person is a mystery yeah. you you have to put all of your protective gears yeah. on you know because i'm constantly perplexed good young ladies keep telling me they don't meet any good young men mm -hmm. and good young men keep telling me they don't, we don't meet any young uh, ladies for me i'm not thinking yeah. is it that they have a veil over their eyes mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. but what you have alluded to is what is the issue mm -hmm. how do you determine whether a person is good when you have not even interacted with a person and interaction with them is based on suspicion and fear mm, mm, mm. so there's a lot there is bias. every small thing that happens you're looking for confirmation that something may be wrong mm. of course there are bad people yeah but in order to be in order to be able to recognize a good person you need to have invested a lot of time and effort in studying positive, beneficial so relationships. Yes. And there are many of them. Hmm. There are many of them around you, if you would be. But you know, that's one truth that many singles do not believe. I see men and women, there are no good guys. There are no good ladies. And I'm like, okay, come, let me meet you. I know you are good. You, I know. Let me merge you guys because I feel like this is one of the struggles that we face in today's generation, whereby people are so scared. And I like that you say that. And I want to really emphasize that point that singles need to really study relationships. I was telling somebody recently that you don't need to assume that everybody that comes into your life is for a dating relationship. You should have good friends of both male and female that you will keep for years. I have good friends that I've had since secondary school, university. We never dated. And today we are friends. They know my husband, they know my children. But our singles now are not thinking in that light. Every guy that comes is a candidate. Every lady that comes is a candidate. So I think that we owe it to ourselves to really take out time to be positive. Yes. I feel like there has to be a balance, Ma. How, yes, you're watchful of negative people, but you're also trying to, you yourself, be open and try to have simple relationships with people. Thank you so much, Ma, for sharing that. I would I would jump, um, I'll jump some questions I have here because time is already, is already running. So now we know that you met your husband during NYC. Now we know that you invited him to ask you to ask you to come to his house. <laughs> now we know that you already you already said I do before he came and said, Will you marry me? I want to ask Ma, what would you say you had or you still have? What difference would you say you had in your values, in your goals, in your beliefs with your husband? Is there any particular area where both of you think differently? act differently and if yes how have you navigated that from dating to now okay then um myself and my husband are very alike in a lot of things mm -hmm. but that's also because we took time extensively mm -hmm. to understand one another mm -hmm. you know when you have similar values with someone it does not mean that they will be lived out mm -hmm. in the same way <laughs> so Again, you also have different backgrounds, different yeah. origins, different nurture, different life experiences, different life exposure. Mm -hmm. So definitely conflict is a given. But I think that two significant areas in which my husband and I were very different 
is one in managing money okay. and two in um, how God is to be worshipped. Mm. Yes, those were, see, in fact, how God is to be worshipped is something that almost broke our marriage. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yes, the, that was how serious that it was. Mm -hmm. What was interesting is that we discussed very many things and came to uh, the same page, but we just assumed that what it means to be a Christian is the same for everybody. Wow. Because well, I was going to ask you if you noted it during dating. Well, this is what I would say. You and that's what I, I, perhaps I should help the singles to understand this. If you don't have clarity about what something means in your life, you mm. are not likely to notice any significant difference. So I grew up in a in a Christian home. I had always gone to church in my life. Most of the people I knew were people like me. So I didn't know that there were people who called themselves and didn't carry Christianity on their head. Mm. Go to church on Sunday, go to church on Sunday evening, go to Bible study, go to prayer meeting. I didn't know. Yeah. So if you said you were a Christian, I just felt um, okay with you. Now, when we got married, one of the first things that happened was that, of course, I needed to join my husband in his church. He was Igbo, I was Yoruba. So we were looking for a church where we both will understand what was spoken. And then I, I actually, because I had the understanding that when a woman marries, essentially she takes on a lot of the life of her husband. husband. It's not an oppression thing. There can be... You have to agree which way you are going to go. And mm -hmm. for the most part, that agreement is reached by just mm. knowing that you will go with your husband to his church. So I mm. was fortunate, I was shown the catechism of the Anglican church, I read it and I agreed with it. However, the living out of it mm. Mm. was, mm. My, own, my understanding of it was very different from that of my husband. With the benefit mm. of hindsight now, I actually see that my husband even understood spiritual matters more than me. More than you! Yes, you yes. saw danger, you know, mm. where I didn't see many of the places I wanted to go. As I grew older and became more mature, I mm. realized that those people were not as deep Christians as I thought yeah. that they were. And so when he was putting his foot down, plus I would go to Bible study then and I would go from work and I would not come back until about nine. It just was not doable. So that caused a lot of problems with us. Mm. Right now, we still think differently, you know, about a lot of things spiritually. But one yeah. of the things that I have come to realize is God is the only one who knows who loves him. Yeah. And so, yes. so many people struggle. Should, should the man not be the spiritual leader and everything? Frankly, yeah. I don't know where to got that one from. Everybody leading themselves spiritually. God is the mm -hmm. one who is yeah. <laughs> all of us, yeah. you know. But in living out our faith, I didn't, I, I'm not shy of talking about, you know, my perspectives about the Bible. And mm -hmm. we've learned how to talk together about things. I think more important is people acquiring the capacity to be able to live with somebody who thinks differently from them. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be making decisions together, solving problems together, um, influencing one another, reacting to change. You've just got to realize that your partner will always be different from you. Yes. It's not a, it's not a, it's not that the person wants to oppress you or anything. Anybody who grew up, who was born into a different family from you, who was nurtured in a different way from you, who mm -hmm. was exposed to different life experiences from you, who was ex who had different life exposure from you. It is guaranteed what shaped their perspectives on life are not the same as yours. Yeah. And that is the root of all of the issues that you are having. So mm -hmm. one way is not better than the other. What I always say to people is that if you didn't grow up in your house, 
if you grew up in the house of your spouse, what is the probability that you'll be different from who they are now? You, you'll be thinking like them too. So what's, what you need is, as you're a single, grow your capacity mm. to listen to somebody who thinks differently from you, hear their, stand in their shoe, and find common ground so that you can go forward. The differences we had in money is that my husband knew how to manage personal finance when we married. Hmm. In fact, he was a guru already in it. Ah, and me, me, accountant. I, me, I had no clue hmm. at all. I, the only rule I had for managing money then was just don't spend what you don't have. So wow. you can imagine the kind of clashes that we had, you know, because he wanted hmm. me to be uh, having records of the expenses, accounting for how I was spending money. We, we wow. made a budget together. We agreed. And we'd, we've never had a joint account. Okay. But right from the onset, we had the conversation. My husband was a proper Igbo person. So what he said to me is, money can cause trouble in marriage. Hmm. Do you want to keep your money or do you want to do money with me? And I grew up in a home where my parents did money together. So mm. I wanted to do money with mm. him. And so right from the onset, we agreed that we will do what I call joint finance. Joint yeah. finance meant thinking about money together. And that we figured out what are our expenses, what are the costs that we have to having a family, and where is the money? going to come from so we first thought mm. about money together mm. before dis if deciding where the funding of the things we mm. needed to do was going to come mm. and essentially because we trusted one another i always tell people that it's now 38 years that i've been married to my husband and he's been very straightforward and honest with me i've not mm. had reason to regret um, joining money from him. In fact, I've been the chief beneficiary because <laughs> I had I didn't have to be thinking about somebody else was worried mm -hmm. about them and money. Yeah. Them. yeah. Wow. Ma, as you share all of this, someone may be there saying, oh, okay, um, you have these challenges because these two areas that you mentioned are very, very important. I've, I've worked with people who that spirituality was a major major challenge for them and if you if you've said that um somehow you were able to you know is that is that one or two things you want to share with us maybe go deeper a bit on how you were able to navigate those seasons because i know that when people begin to experience such challenges sometimes they lose their mind they cry they're overwhelmed you're not able to be resourceful in other areas of your lives. How were you able to deal with that? Were you talking to people? Were you reading books? I don't know if there were counselors. Then did you run to your mom? What exactly did you do to navigate that season of your life? I think the thing for many people, especially those who call themselves Christians, is that they don't really work with God. So we, we, we have our definition of how relationships should be. I think for me, the primary way that I navigated that season was actually that I drew closer to God. So I was reading, it would interest people that I didn't go to church, I didn't go to any Bible study for seven years. I've never gone for a night vigil in my life, by the way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Coming from the background that you explained that you came from. Wow. You know, so the the thing was that I came to the place, I think that what shifted things for me primarily was that I asked myself, what if I was a missionary? Hmm. And I was in some back of the beyond. There wouldn't be any congregation to fellowship with. So all that hmm. cry of is denying me going to fellowship and all of those things. Hmm. What would I do? What would I do hmm. in that time? So. I came to the realization that, okay, was he asking me not to believe God? No. Was he asking me to deny the faith? No. Did he ask me not to read my Bible? No. So mm. I, 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 I didn't, I mean, I stopped going to Bible study, like I said, for seven years. I didn't go to prayer meeting or things like that. I just went to Sunday service. But in the estate that I lived in, 
I had friends who I did Bible study with. Mm. You know, they were mm. not members of my church. So we just had times that we would sit together. I had a friend that I would go to her house and pray. Incidentally, her husband was also Muslim. But we would sit down and gist with him. And then we would tell him we want to pray and he will excuse us from praying. So essentially, mm. I came to realize that one, my faith was a personal one. Two, mm -hmm. my su faith support community did not have to come from a congre congregation. So I think it was during those seven years of my life that I actually started reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelations every year. Mm. And that wow. opened my eyes to a lot of things. In fact, when people say, oh, I have a lot of death in my walk with God, that's where it mm. came from. But then I also then got a book at that time, and I think the book is still available, How to Be the Happy Wife of an Unsaved mm. Husband. You know, and what is interesting by Linda Davis, and one of the interesting things that Linda Davis said in that book is that people who love God and who want to worship him, who have a husband or a wife, who does not feel the same as them, need to understand that as far as their partner is concerned, you are having mm. an affair with somebody that your partner cannot see. Mm. Mm. Because all of a sudden, you and them, you were detected before, and now you have somebody in your life yeah. who is influencing you, who they, who they don't know, and who they're not able to control. And that sort of shifted a lot of things for mm. me. It led me to stop holding on to what I would call the external structures of Christianity. Mm -hmm. It led me to start looking at, so I could go to people's house and have fellowship with them, just as that is not a, we came for fellowship, but I came to yeah. visit such mm -hmm. that your husband will not be offended. Your, mm -hmm. your husband is as a threat. In fact, your husband welcomes me. Papa, yes, if something yes. in your home, it's me that your husband will quickly mm -hmm. call, you know, like that. And I also was attending fellowship at work. And the people who were running that lunch hour fellowship showed a lot of maturity because when they found out my situation, they were inviting me to weekend programs in their church. Wow. But when so they kept asking, ah, you don't come to the weekend programs. What's the matter? Why don't you come? You know, and things and things like that. But when they mm -hmm. found out the details of my story, then they said, Oh no, we understand. Wow, nice. You don't see where it is written in the Bible that you should obey your husband only if he's a Christian. Mm, true, true, true. So that that was how um we navigated the years. What was interesting is that in the seventh year, the vicar of my Anglican church decided that I was going to be on the parish committee. Wow. So I told ah. him that he had to come to the house and speak with my oh, husband. Yes. And yes. he came, you know, and my husband did not know how to say no to him. But at the same time, he was not happy. But I just said to him that if you don't tell me what you want and I go to church on Sunday, and I take an oath that I'm going to be a parish committee member, I will not turn back, mm. regardless mm. of how you feel about it. So that was the beginning of my coming out um, in church. From then, I went on to become the president of the Christian Women Fellowship. Let's look at that now. A lot of other things. You know? Let's look at that. Wow. <laughs> Afterwards. Just... But wow. I, I tell people that when I find myself in a difficult situation, mm -hmm. I think deeply about it and reflect on it and find my own reason mm. for doing what somebody else wants me to do. So mm -hmm. my husband expressed all of what he felt. And then I, I decided that I wanted my marriage more than I wanted to be right. So mm. I stayed with him. But what was interesting is that after many years, I found out that it was actually the poor witness of Christians that he had known. Mm, that there was a wife. The attitude that he had towards me. So if I had also been a strong-headed person, yes, I would not have been confirming all of the things that he had previously yes, um, experienced. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, this is so interesting. Somebody once said that a, a fine spouse or a good spouse is most likely a good Christian. Like if you struggle with your Christianity, chances are you would most likely struggle with marriage. Because see what you just said. He was actually just watching out to see how you were, you know, handling. And something struck me, Mama, while you were speaking. From what you said, the goal that both of you had, the spiritual goals were the same, to serve God, to love God. But the approach, the strategy, yes, is what is what is what was different, which is why it's important that we have goals aligned. I feel like what was able to help you navigate is because I've been issued from the beginning, your spiritual goals were aligned. And then when it came to our values were aligned, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the values were aligned. So when it came to the how to, which is what you also said that we would not always think differently. And the truth is, you may not be able to talk about everything in details. Oh, yeah, how will we pray? Who call Jesus first? Or we will we say amen? The details might not be able to, but once the values are aligned, there would always be a way. Thank you so much, Ma, for And sharing. I think, let me just also add this. You know, um, there are battles and there are battles in marriage. Mm. I think most people fight over... So, for example, when I'm talking with couples about money, say, and, you know, they're saying... Um, I cannot, uh, I cannot, I cannot do money together with this person. I said to them, when you go to your child's school, the head of school is doesn't care the financial management plan that you have within your family. <laughs> Just look at your son name, Adaka, as mm -hmm. he paid. Yeah. They don't, it, whether it is Mrs. who is supposed to pay or Mr. who is supposed to pay, they really don't care. And as if, if that is the situation, then you've got to just um, get your head in the right space mm. with the person. And that is the reason why I say to people, you know, especially ladies, when you, it's never too early to talk about the things that are important to you. Because if this person is not going in the same direction as you, you shouldn't even travel on the journey too far with them. Exactly. Yeah, true. Absolutely. I feel like most people are led more by their emotions. How they feel. <laughs> well, and, and that's the reason why we're, we're now doing all of the things that you and I and our colleagues are doing. Because, mm -hmm. so you imagine that people are trying to choose without understanding this kind of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understand it. So I said to people, you want to choose somebody that you're going to live with for the next few years. It's from day one that you meet yeah. them that you should be trying to find that there's somebody that you spend your 50 years with. And it is only if mm -hmm. they are looking like someone somebody you should spend 50 years with that you are now going to be mm -hmm. thinking um, let's go let me get to know you more and everything mm -hmm. that you're trying to find out about them should be helping you to determine whether they're the person or not mm -hmm. mm. absolutely so for example, absolutely thank you for sharing let me jump when right I, into I, some other questions that we had time is running I feel like my ahead. network is Okay, great. So my, I want to ask, did you have a list of the things that you wanted in the kind of man you wanted to marry? I mean, I hear that you never get 100%. So did you somewhere in your head or in your journal be like, oh, I want a tall, dark and handsome, or I want a spiritual man, or I want this or that. And then if you did, how were you able to manage your expectations i mean the part that he did not need to how are you able to navigate okay short 40 percent or short 30 percent or because people now everybody has it how are they able to navigate this short for <laughs> i think the people of today major too much on the minors mm -hmm. that's the reason why they have a very long yeah, what is that the major issues i, I, I think the primary 
I think the primary thing that I um, wanted was just, I wanted a man who was clear what he wanted to do with his life. Mm. That was it, you know? So one of the things that attracted me to my husband was, here was a man who, when I met him, and he told me, he said, I can't allow any girl to get pregnant for me anyhow. Uh -uh. Mm. What kind of a thing is that? I only have children when I want to have children. Mm. I mean, so he, and he, he said to me, I mean, this is the time I want to get married. And, you know, I want my children to have postgraduate education abroad, you know, and all of those kind of wow, things. So, so invariably, yes, it was somebody who had clarity about where he wanted to go. So, of course, my husband was honest. He was yeah. not a, he, he was somebody who, as you talk with him, you would know that he was a honest person. So I basically wanted a good person, mm -hmm. but I... I wanted more. I came to marriage knowing that my husband was going to lead me. So I could not marry somebody who I could not follow. Mm, mm, that's it. That's it. So I, I, I could, no, it doesn't matter how nice or whatever else he was, if he was not somebody that he could lead me and I would follow him, I could not marry him. So for me, that was it. You know, when I said the young people of today are majoring in the minors, the, the important thing more than is he tall, is he short, is he good, does he uh, manage money? The thing is, when you know where somebody is coming from mm -hmm. and you know where he's going to, if he's clear about those two things, that tells you already a lot. Mm -hmm. About him. If he, if I always tell people that if you agree with me the first time you are going to meet me, that we should meet at five o'clock, mm -hmm. and you are not there at five o'clock, it tells me something about, about you. you. Yes. If you are not there at five o'clock, and you don't call me to let me know that something is holding you, it tells me something you. about you. Yes. If you come at six o'clock and you don't apologize to me that you kept you waiting, it tells me a whole lot about you. About you. About you. Mm -hmm. so a lot of things that people are holding, there's things that you can see in people. However, have you clarified for yourself what you want and how important that thing is to you? So, for example, I said I meet people who are in a relationship with somebody who is in a different religion or for a, a different denomination. Mm. And I'm saying to myself, if what you believe is so important to you, when this person toasted you, the first thing that you should have noticed about him is that they don't believe the same as you. Yes. And so you should not even have started mm -hmm. at all. Yes. You can now start and be saying, I've told them that this is what is important to me mm -hmm. and we're struggling. Yeah. Because if you believe that strongly, that means that anything for you that is a no-go is one of the first things that you're looking at yeah. and you should, you know. So for me, the only thing that my husband didn't have that I've had to live with is that he's not as tall as I wanted him to be. Oh, my God. It's one of the minor things. <laughs> Because when I was reading all those my meals and boost to yeah, yeah. I used to think that I was going to marry somebody who I've been looking up to the way we want to be. Yeah, and yes, like that. yes, yes, yes. Mine was mine was I wanted to marry somebody that can dance because I love to dance. But to my shaka, <laughs> even on my wedding day, <laughs> Mama said, I'm not till tomorrow. <laughs> And then maybe I would have loved to have somebody, you know, who talks as much as me. Mm. But my husband is a very quiet person. He mm. doesn't talk so much. Mm. Mm. Interesting. But that's a very fine blend. It's a very fine blend. One of the things that you said mm. that I really liked, even though you spoke on one side, I kind of picked the other side. When you said that you picked somebody that could lead you and that you would follow. Which also means that if you're not ready to lead, then don't go there. If you're not ready to follow, then don't go there as well. And then there's another thing that you've been saying indirectly from the first question I asked you, which is the fact that 
what you want as a person, as a single person, is very important. And if you have no idea what you want, then you're already on the wrong track. Like, if you're not clear on what you want, there's no way you're able to bring that at the beginning of the conversation. And that is why we find people who are two years into dating and they're complaining, oh, she smokes, oh, she dresses like this. Because what happened from day one? So those things that you hold dear, those values, those beliefs should be at the forefront of your conversations. And if you don't see any traits of those, then it's better for you to back out and call every breakfast. I think that's what Ms. Bob is trying to do. Thank you. And I think I, I would just also add this, you know, sometimes where a person is coming from mm. may make them not to have what you're looking for. Mm. So for example, when my husband married me, I was completely clueless about managing finances. Yeah. And that was pretty important to him. So that was sufficient for him to have choked me. Mm. He recognized that I was coming from a place where I was not taught that, I was not exposed to that. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that when I started being exposed to it, was I willing to learn and was I open to change? So there's some people that initially may not tick all your boxes, mm -hmm. but you can also assess, are they that way because of where they're coming from? And if that is the case, how do they react when they're exposed to new information? Mm -hmm. If they embrace it and are willing to learn, then that may help you to give um, consider it. But you've got to realize also that if you meet them when you're 25, it means that you have 25 years experience of it mm. and they are just starting wow how much you mm. you know mm. at the same level on one it's probably going to take another 10 15 years for them to match you that way do mm. you have the willingness and capacity to be patient for them to grow in that area if you don't have the willingness and the capacity so they may be willing to learn Mm. But you do not have the witness to be patient for them mm. to learn it. Yes. Yeah. That's so important. Having the capacity to be patient while you allow your partner to grow in that area where they are not that well. Wow, that's so deep. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, I'm gonna be asking just two more questions before we go. But guys, are you still here? Are you having an amazing time? I really don't want this to end because I'm having a very good time if you have any questions we will take maybe one or two please drop them in the chat once i'm done with these questions i will take them if you have any and if there's none we will call it today for those of you who just joined us welcome it's day one of the dating chronicles and we have with us here mommy mo who's the founder of the right fit marriage academy now mommy mo it's 38 years I heard you at the beginning say it almost cost a divorce. You guys had some, I mean, not a divorce, like you almost you almost packed your bag to say I'm not doing it again. I have heard, I feel like a very large percentage of people who have a strong, long-lasting marriage, at one point in time, they almost packed their bags, but they stayed. Mommy Mo, what made you stay in those moments when you wanted to pack your bag and say, I'm not doing it again? I am tired. <laughs> you know, I think the thing is, um, when I met my husband and we decided to marry, one of the things I said to him is this, I'm going to be married to you forever. And it's not going to depend on you. Hmm. So for me, um, my willingness to stay in the marriage was not dependent on anything that my husband did. Now, I need to put a caveat here. Okay. It's very important for you to have chosen somebody who is, like I said, who has a head on his shoulders or who has a head mm -hmm. on her shoulders. Yeah. But I personally, Mudukwe Hirim, even before I met my husband, mm -hmm. had already decided that I'm going to be married forever mm -hmm. and it will not be dependent on my husband mm. so what it meant for me practically was that <laughs> I had to figure out how to make things work 
And so my goal wasn't to change my husband. Mm. My goal was to understand marriages that last forever, what makes them to work. Mm. Mm. Way back in, that, in those 80s, whenever me and my husband had a misunderstanding, I just walked to Leventy store and looked at all the books until I came across a book that was addressing the issue that was going on in our life. Wow. And I took it home and read it, you know. So one interesting thing, for example, that happened at that time was that, you know, silent treatment is not a new thing. Mm. When somebody gets upset with you and they keep quiet, they don't talk, they don't eat your food. Mm. You know, when I went to the bookstore and bought the books and I was reading it, I, I was just surprised that, eh, hey, it's not unusual. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, Anybody who uses silent treatment, it means that they've not learned how to effectively communicate. Mm -hmm. hey, wow. okay, if you are with such a person, this is how you should do. Yeah. That day, I bought nice notes, paper, and envelope. Mm. When I get home, if I had anything I wanted to say to my husband, I will write it on nice wow. notes, paper, and put it on the pillow, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and everything. And it didn't mean that it was less painful mm. for me because nobody really wants to be in the house with somebody who completely ignores you yeah. but at least it helps me to understand that it isn't me mm -hmm. you know so once i understood that and i started learning how to manage it it took quite a while remember what i said mm. people take time to change yeah. you know so but for me once i understood that so I personally, even before I chose my husband, already knew that I wanted to be married forever. And I think the third thing I said to him was that, and I'm going to be happy. Mm. I wasn't going to remain in the marriage just so that mm. uh, I'll remain in the marriage. So I was constantly on the lookout for what is in my own power to do. Mm. I remember, you know, when I did something and my husband felt pretty offended and you know, I asked him to forgive me and I did all the things according to what the Bible says we should do. A man was still offended. When I was crying, God said to me, I, when I ask you to uh, uh, ask for forgiveness, did I say that the person will automatically forgive, forgive you? you? <laughs> and once I understood that, I said, okay, so it, it, whenever he decided that, you know, so there were lots of things that I, I, I really studied the Bible for myself to understand. Mm -hmm. To be honest, apart from my friend who we used to go and pray, who we used to talk to one another and pray together about, I'm not sure that I went to people to be asking them, what will I do? I went to look at books. I went to um, mm. read the Bible. I really sat down with my issues mm. and tried to figure them out yes. of that. Okay, yes. What's going on? What should I let go? What should I hold on to? Mm -hmm. Can I change him? If I cannot change him, how am I supposed to live you know, in a way that is not going to injure me emotionally? And I mm -hmm. think because my expectations were leveled that way, I was able mm -hmm. to go on with my life, even when we yeah. had difficult circumstances. And yeah. I now teach people and say, look, you came from a different place from that person. So it is not surprising that they're responding to life issues differently from yeah. you. Yeah. As um, you know, the way that I was feeling uncomfortable, the fact that my husband was in those situations, for example, using the silent treatment, did not mean that he too was happy. Mm. He yeah. too was unhappy. He just mm. didn't know how to do it. So two unhappy people. Aha. So for me to sit in the place of a victim and be thinking, see what he's doing to me, is mm. what will make me die. Because yeah. I'm thinking he's doing this to me. But once I understood that it's two unhappy people who mm -hmm. did not know how to address the issues of their unhappiness. Yes. I, I, I just, you know, I just, so I would just say the breeze, we will grow over. But mm -hmm. I then grew to be somebody who always addressed issues. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it can be something that I foresee will cause trouble. Mm -hmm. But since not talking about it will also cause trouble. Let yes, us let's talk about it. 
and uh, you know, okay. let's use the trouble that we follow. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much, Ma. I think in my head, I'm doing like a summary of everything that you have said. And while you have said that choosing the right person for you is important and you must carefully make that decision, there is also a second part, which is beyond choosing the right person, you also want to decide to make it work. And in deciding to make it work, you ought to combine the scriptures with research, with studying, with exposing yourself to wisdom. Because from everything you have said, that is what kept you sitting down with yourself and your issues to study the Bible, which is your own belief as what guides your decision. And also going to look for wisdom, buying books. In today's world now, maybe then we didn't have courses and all that. But in today's world now, we have courses, we have coaching programs, we have webinars like this one, you know. And I feel like the combination of that, not I even feel like, I can see, and I also have that personal experience as well, combining both tools to build the kind of marriage that you want. So if you are single and you are not yet dating, don't automatically think that because you chose the right person, it is going to work. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and that's something that everybody needs to do. Choosing the right person is one thing. Mm -hmm. Understanding marriage mm. and what makes it to work yep. is another thing thing entirely yeah. especially when you're living in the world where a lot of stories you know i said that at the beginning yeah a lot of stories are shared mm -hmm. about couples that are not able to make their marriages to work yes if that is all of the information that you have believe you me you have not learned anything about marriage mm -hmm. one learn from people who actually have stayed together who are happy, if they're honest, they will tell you all their rough patches, you mm. know. In fact, I always say that where you are now as a single person is the time to get um, couples whose marriages you admire and talk to them about what is going on behind the scenes in their own marriages. That way yeah. you would learn a lot from them. Absolutely. And I think that that is what we are actually doing in the Dating Chronicles, right? Bringing people who have been married for years, who are also having a great time in your marriage. And when we hear great time, it doesn't mean that there are no challenges. Well, there are. <laughs> <laughs> there are. Because, I mean, some of my close friends, I mean, when they come around and they see me and my husband have a clash here and there, you know, and they look, I'm like, why are you surprised? You think we're perfect. Like you think we don't we don't have our own differences. So having a marriage that works does not necessarily mean that they don't fight, but how do they navigate that season and come out of it? Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, do you have any last words for the people who are live here today before we end the series? Okay. Um, I think the thing I want to say to everybody who is listening, whether you're single or you're married, is this. You owe it to yourself to educate yourself about marriage. And when I say educate yourself, don't read book for your partner. Don't uh, oh, go to the program. So, nah. you know, so don't be hearing things and saying, this is what my husband should be doing or this is what my partner should be doing. Read it for yourself. Learn yes. it for yourself. Remember the skills I talked about? The, yes. ability, the capacity to live with somebody who thinks differently from you, mm. you know, who, do, who has different perspectives on life. I see the way people interact on social media. I just shake my head because mm. you are showing that you cannot live in marriage. If you are 28 and the person you married is 30, it is when you have been married for 30 years Mm. that you would have spent the same number of years with them as they lived before yeah. you met them. Every time you people interact, 30 years of life is clashing 
with 28 years of life. Mm. So if when you have dated the person for two years, when you people marry, you are still strangers. True. And it is when you now start living together that a lot of things are going to be showing up. So conflict is not anything to be afraid of. Conflict is just showing you, hmm, there is something more about this person that I don't yet know. Mm. And so your goal when you meet somebody and you start a relationship that is going to be end in marriage is curiosity. Curiosity because you have many years of their life. So I give mm. you an illustration. When people see me and they always say, oh, mommy, Mo, you are very gentle. You listen to people. You, talk, you, know, you hear them and everything. Mm. That's how my home was growing up. Mm. Mm. So it means by the time my husband met me, I had 27 years of living that way. Now, if I marry somebody who in their home, when they are not, when they have misunderstanding, everybody goes into their room. That mm. means that person who has 27 years of living that way. When me oh and them God. start living together, what's going to happen? Of course, there'll be trouble. So yeah. we have to now learn how to live together. And so that's the reason why when you are having conversations with the person you want to marry, what you're talking about is where are we coming from? Where do we want to go together? What needs to happen in between? So when you have to shift or they have to shift, you are not shifting because one person is oppressing you. You are shifting because both of you are asking yourself, what is going to take us to where we want to go together? And so if my own way is not going to take us to where we want to get, go together, I'm willing to drop it. Not because you are oppressing me, but because mm -hmm. what I want will not take us to where we want to go. And oh, your partner is the same. So as you start looking at where you are coming from and what you brought, the way you are looking at it is that, is it going to take us to the future that we want together? Mm -hmm. And if it is going to take us to the future that we want together, then I'm willing to put it down. And if it is going to take us to the future we want together, but my partner does not yet need it, I then become the kind of person who has to learn how to get somebody to see something that they don't yet see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the skills that people actually need to be working on more than worrying about, is this person a perfect fit for me? Mm -hmm. Because you will never meet somebody, who, even when you have met the person that you love, Torito, mm -hmm. and who loves you, Torito. And your butterfly is jumping up and down. <laughs> yes, because you are coming from different places, it is guaranteed that all of these clashes are still going to come when you start living together. Mm -hmm. Wow, so amazing. learning how to be with somebody who thinks differently from you, being able to recognize when somebody is willing to learn and open to change, and being open, willing to learn and being open to change yourself are some of the primary skills that you need as a single who is looking ahead to marriage. Wow, this is so good. Winifred says so much wisdom. So much wisdom. What do you expect? 38 years. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me. Such, a, such an insightful session tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are you sleeping? See my notes, two pages full already. Thank you so much, ma'am. I see that we do not have any more questions. I feel like I need a good job of the questions that I asked. Thank you so much, ma'am. Some people here will want to connect with you, will want to reach you perhaps after this session. Please, ma, how can we reach you? How can we connect with you? Okay. The best way to reach me is actually Facebook. So on Facebook, I am there as Modukwe Ehirim. And you can also check my page, The Right Fit Marriage Academy. On Instagram, I'm there as The Right Fit Marriage. If you send me a message, I would respond to you. The only thing is, I don't like people who say hi. I know that people like to respect older people, but in my own case, just say, hello, mommy, Mo. this is who I am. This is what I want. And just go on, go on, go on. If you say hello, <laughs> your hello is going to remain there forever. <laughs> How are you doing, ma? 
Hope you slept well, ma. <laughs> Thank you so much, mommy. Mo. We'll let you go for tonight. Thank you so much. As our regards to Mr. Ahirim, God bless you, ma. And have a oh, beautiful night. Thank you very much for having Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been an amazing, amazing, amazing time. What have you taken away? What did you take away? Share with us in the comments. Let us know. Even as a married person, I took a lot. I took down a lot of things that is definitely going to help my own marriage now i told you this was going to be lit and you can see that it was lit little liters we continue tomorrow if you did not register for this program if somebody sent you the link please know that this is a five days program so we continue tomorrow with day two and we go deeper we'll be having coach dolly of the healthy marriage Oh, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to be told what happened. So if you did not register, please go ahead and register with the link www.askmrsparkles.com slash DC. And then, of course, please do well to follow us here on follow us here on YouTube. And then, of course, on Instagram at Ask Mrs. Sparkles. We have a lot lined up for you. One thing I did not say at the beginning is my agenda this year is to work directly and coach 150 single professionals and business owners. Yes, we're giving so much attention to the married folks, but I feel it's time we do the same for the singles okay so i'm giving so much attention to the singles and by the end of this five day series you would know and become aware of how you can work with me this year how you can become part of the 150 people i plan to coach this year start your dating right with the right mindset with the right values and with the right beliefs for tomorrow's session, we'll be using a different link and it will be sent to your email if you registered. Today is public, but from tomorrow, we go private. So if you don't register, you will not get access to the sessions for day two up until day five. Thank you so much. I see all of the love. Thank you, everyone who stayed till this time. I appreciate you. Have an amazing night rest. And if you are in other parts of the world, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>